you need to share a Notion page with a larger crowd. And then the Notion URL itself isn't going to cut it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn those long URLs into something personally branded, but much easier to share like this. I'm Bas, I talk about using tech to be more productive. If you're new to the channel, then welcome. And if you're a regular visitor, then thanks for sticking around. Let's get started. Why use a URL shortener? The Notion URL is fine if you just slack it to someone or put it on WhatsApp. But in reality, of course, there's plenty of places where you wanna share something where it isn't that easy. At the end of presentations, in documentation that's in print where somebody has to type it over or on the phone. And then using a short name is a lot easier. Now you can use URL shorteners in their regular form to get something, but it doesn't look that professional. Also, it has this random text in the end and that still makes it hard to transfer to other people. So in this video, I'm talking about using Rebrandly and a custom domain to make something that looks a lot nicer and is easier to share. As a bonus, when using a URL shortener, it will give you statistics on how many people used the link that you shared. So they get a shorter URL and you get some data that you can adjust your next work on. For the video, I'm gonna assume that you already have a domain. If you do not have a domain, you can go to places like domain.com or transip and get a domain from there. Now, quick recap. What is a URL shortener and what is a custom domain in a URL shorter? So when you use a custom domain, it means that you take one of your names on the internet, so yourdomain.com, put something in front of it, like I'm gonna say notion.yourdomain.com, and point that towards a URL shortening service. Meaning, if somebody types in your short URL in a browser, that browser will go to the URL shortener service, tell it like, I got this link, what do I do with it? And then the URL shortener says like, I know that, that's this link, makes a note in statistics, send them through to the end page, and this all happens automatically. So the end user doesn't really notice anything, there's just a few steps that are taken by computers, and well, computers handle data just fine. In this video, I'm gonna use Rebrandly. Now, I always use Bitly for this, which is another service that does it, but they made custom branded links a paid service. So I had to look for something else to explain to you guys. I found Rebrandly, they allow you to have five custom domains, which should be more than enough. They have a lot of features where you can get extra stuff by paying for it. I am not sponsored by them. It's just the first service that I found and it seems to me the most user friendly. I'm not gonna show you how to make a Rebrandly account. That setup is pretty trivial and if you've ever used any web shop, you should be able to click through that in a minute. We're gonna dive straight into setting up a custom domain. In this example, I'm gonna put Notion in front of my domain to use as the URL shortener base. But you could replace Notion in this case with anything you'd like. On many other setups, I use the S for example, because it's just one letter and it keeps the URL short. Uh, but in this case, I want something that's pronounceable. So you can tell people to go to notion.yourdomain.com slash meetinginfo5, and then they'll get to like the specific Notion page that you assign to that. To do so, you go to Rebrandly, go to the Domains tab and click New Domain. Type in the domain with the full. So I'm gonna type in notion toolsontech.me. That's the URL. Then I click on OK and you will see it give you some technical tidbits like an A record. The only thing that you really need to remember is that number that's behind it. So there's like four digits with dots in between it. That's an IP address. Copy and paste that to a notepad or somewhere because you're gonna need it later. So now we get into the tiny technical bit of this video because you need to tell your domain register that this URL that you made, notionyourdomain.com, needs to point towards Rebrandly. And to do so, you have to go to your domain provider. I'm gonna show domain.com, go to their DNS settings, and you'll probably get a long list of yeah, records and numbers and things, and it might look complex if you're not used to this. Just remember that the only thing that we need to do here is add a record. Now to add a record, there's usually either a big button that says add new record, or there's like an empty field on the top or bottom of this list. Ignore the rest, find the empty fields, or click the create new record button. Now there's a couple of fields. The first one is usually name. And name is just a thing that's in front of your domain. Remember you're editing your domain, so you don't need to add the full name here. In this case, I just need to type in Notion. The domain will get added. Then you have to specify the type of record. In this case, it's A. A means point 
the browser towards this IP address. And the IP address is the address of rebrandly in this case. Now the IP I ask you to save, you put that one in the value field or the target IP address, it depends a bit on the view that you get. And this is the core that you need. There's usually a few other fields that you don't really need to set where you can just accept the defaults if they're there, but they're good to know. There's the TTL, which stands for time to life. And what that basically means when a DNS record is sent to someone, this is how long they remember it. This saves a lot of traffic and it's usually set to like a day. And that means that if you ever change this record, it will take roughly a day before everyone gets that update. If you're testing this or if you're new, I would recommend putting it on a low value, like half an hour or five minutes, because then you can easily fix changes or bugs that you made. Like if you typed in a wrong IP address, you can change it and then just wait five minutes and get like the new one. If you know what you're doing or it's working fine, you can up this to like a day. Don't worry about it too much. If there's a default value, I would definitely pick that. And then finally, there's priority. Not every DNS register has that. Sometimes they just put it in front or something. Uh, we don't need that right now. Priority is mostly for when there's multiple servers and then it can like fill over. That's the technical bit of it. Leave it empty. And if it's not allowing empty, I would say put in 10. Save it and then comes the long wait. DNS isn't instant and it's good to know that. Usually it's like a five minute wait. Sometimes it's an hour. It can be as much as 24 hours if you're changing an existing record. But most cases it should work fine after five minutes. Just check it, refresh it, wait for a bit. Um, if it takes more than an hour and it's a new record, I would definitely just go back and double check your steps to make sure you put the right stuff in. Now. Once that's set up, there's a few easy tests that you can do to see if it's working as intended. And the simplest test is just to type in the URL in your browser. So you go to notion.yourdomain.com or whatever you picked as a domain to put it on. And there's a few answers you can get. Well, the first one is that the browser says, I can't find this website. This means that the DNS record isn't updated yet. So the browser doesn't know where it needs to ask for an IP address or for more information. That's good. That just means that we're still in the waiting period. Just wait a bit longer, try refreshing it after a while. It should start working eventually. Uh, if it doesn't work after a day, then put something in the comments and I'll see if I can help you out by getting it fixed. So the other result that you can get is that it shows rebrandly and that means it's working. That means that you get redirected to rebrandly and because there's no URL name behind it, they don't know where to redirect you and they just get like a placeholder. This means everything's fine and you can start checking inside Rebrandly to see if it's working. Once you get to Rebrandly, that one should show you that it's either active or that you need to wait a bit. They'll send you an email about this as well, so there's no need to press a five. Just go watch a Netflix show. It should work within half an hour. Now that we have everything set up, we can actually start using it. You could use the Rebrandly extension, but in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it through their website. That saves me a few steps. Definitely look into the extension though, because it makes this whole process easier once it's installed. Go to Notion, share a page, copy the link. Then you go to Rebrandly, create a new shortcut, paste your link, be sure to click your branded URL that you have now and choose your own name. It will generate something there. And sometimes that's good enough if you just want it shorter, but if you want something that people can type over or spell or remember, it's better to put something pronounceable in there. Remember though, that anything you put in there can only be used for one URL and or page. If you put anything in there like slash documentation and you want to put in something else like documentation, that won't work because you already used that word. So all the words can only be used once. Keep that in mind, make it a bit descriptive. And then go ahead and share it. Put it on a presentation, talk to people, place it in Slack, and you should soon, when you go to Rebrandly, see that people have been clicking on the link and where they're coming from. Thanks for watching the video. Now in the description, there's a link with more information, some of the steps and screenshot, also how to do it with Transipay, because I've got a lot of Dutch viewers and I want to help them out. Be sure to put feedback in the comments. If there's any place where it's not working as you were intending or you're trying to get through this, if you put it in the comment section, I'll read it. I'll try to see if I can help out in some way and put it to the Notion page that I'll link to so other people can find the solution there. 
Now, if you made it this far, then I hope the video was useful to you. And if it was, then be sure to like it because that really helps me out. Another thing that you can do is subscribe if you want to see more of my videos as I make them. That would be absolutely amazing for me. Now, to everybody that made it this far, remember, you're awesome. Keep it up.